Welcome back to my channel Math School. In today's video, let us see the most awaited chapter or the most requested chapter by you guys. That is the chapter number four circles. In this video, we will see the introduction part for chapter four circles. So before we begin with the video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit that bell button so that you will be notified with the latest videos on my channel. Chapter number four, introduction to circles. So before we begin with this chapter, let us see the introduction part where we will learn some important statements and also theorems. Now, first of all, let us see what a circle is. Basically, a circle is a collection of all points in a plane which are at a constant distance from a fixed point that is center. So this is a circle. This circle is a collection of infinite number of points, right? A circle is made up of infinite number of points in this manner and all these points on the circle are equidistance or at equal distance from the center. So this is the center of the circle. So all these points are fixed distance from this center. All the points which are at a fixed distance from this center O forms a circle. This is the center of circle O. And the distance between the circle and this center is called as the radius of the circle. It is also denoted as R. So this is the definition of a circle. Now let us see three conditions with respect to a circle and a line segment PQ. So whenever a line segment PQ and a circle does not have any common point or when they are not intersecting, then in such condition, we can say that non-intersecting line with respect to the circle. Okay, the line PQ and the circle have no common point. In this case, PQ is called as a non-intersecting line with respect to the circle. The second condition is when we have a line segment PQ intersecting at two points on a circle with center O, this line PQ now forms the secant of a circle. Okay, so what is the definition for secant? There are two common points A and B on the circle which this line PQ forms. So in this case, the line PQ forms the secant of the circle, right? So here the line PQ is called as the secant of the circle which intersects the circle at two common points A and B. The third condition can be when a circle and the line segment PQ intersects each other at a common point A, then this line PQ is called as the tangent of a circle. So there is only one point A which is common between the line PQ and the circle with center O. So in this case, PQ or the line segment is called as tangent to the circle. So these are the three important conditions which you have to know. Now here, let us see what a chord is. So whenever we have a circle and there is a line segment which is within the circle, which is inside the circle, then such a line is called as a chord. So this chord can be drawn anywhere on the circle. So for example, this is a circle, it can be drawn in any direction. So such a kind of a line segment which is inside the circle, it should not cross the circumference of the circle. So in such condition, it is called as a chord. So a line segment drawn within the circle is called as a chord. Now let us see what is the diameter of the circle. Now the diameter of the circle is a line segment which is passing through the center of the circle, right? So this is called as the diameter which passes through the center of the circle. It can also be denoted by D and it is called as the diameter. Also remember diameter is equal to two times of the radius, right? Because from the center O to one side, we have a radius and the other side also it forms a radius. Therefore, a diameter is two times of the radius. It is the double of the radius. So therefore, a diameter is a line segment passing through the center of a circle and it is also called as a chord. This is the maximum length a chord can have. That is nothing but the diameter, right? What is a chord? A chord is a line segment which is drawn within the circle. So a diameter forms the longest chord that can be present in a circle. Now the next important topic is tangent to a circle. 
right what is a tangent as previously we have seen a tangent to a circle is a line that intersects the circle at only one point so this is a circle and pq is a tangent which intersects the circle at a single point a and also let us see what is point of contact again this is an important definition which you should know a point of contact is nothing but a common point between the tangent and the circle is called as the point of contact so in this case what is the point of contact so in this case point a is a point of contact between the tangent and the circle the next important point with respect to tangent to a circle is there is only one tangent at a point of a circle but there can be infinite number of tangents to a circle so as we saw in this figure there can be only one tangent at a point on a circle right but when you consider a circle there are infinite number of points which forms a circle right there are infinite number of points which form a circle so at at every point on a circle a tangent can be drawn in this manner so if we have a point here a tangent can be drawn like this if you have a point here the tangent can be drawn like this similarly at every point on a circle a tangent can be drawn since a circle is formed by infinite number of points so there can be infinite number of tangents to a circle but at any given point there can only be one tangent that can be drawn to a circle so second point is the tangent to a circle is a special case of secant when the two end points of the corresponding chord coincide so we have a tangent to a circle so this tangent is a special case of a secant where in case of a secant you saw the line segment intersect at two common points on a circle two points that is point a and point b so this point a and point b coincide at a single point to form a tangent so this tangent is a special case of a secant where two corresponding points coincide at a single point now third important point is there cannot be more than two tangents parallel to given secant there are three secants here on a circle right that is secant 1 secant 2 and secant 3 and there are two tangents that is tangent 1 and tangent 2 right because tangent can intersect at a single point so we have only two tangents t1 and t2 and secant intersects at two points on a circle right so there are three secants here so wh whenever you consider a single secant there are two tangents parallel to this secant so there cannot be more than two tangents that can be parallel to a given secant so this condition is shown here so let me summarize all the points which we learnt here one by one so consider a circle with a center o so basically a circle is formed by infinite number of points which are equidistant from the center o so the distance between the center o to any given point on the circle is called as the radius of the circle right so when we have a line segment which is not intersecting with this circle is it is called as a non intersecting line non intersecting line and whenever this line segment intersects the circle at a single point of contact so let this point be a so such a line segment is now called as the tangent and this point a is called as the point of contact between the circle and the line segment or the tangent point of contact then whenever a line segment passes through two points on a circle so such a line segment which passes through two points on a circle is called as a secant and when this line segment is within the circle it is inside the circle which touches two points on a circle but it is inside the circle so such a line segment is now called as a chord and also the last one a chord which passes through the center of the circle it is called as the diameter okay diameter is a line segment which passes through center of circle which is also called as the chord which is the maximum length a chord can have is nothing but the diameter so these are the few important things that you have to know in case of a circle so in my next video let us see theorem 4.1 from the chapter circles 
and then we will solve exercise 4.1 so till then if you have liked my videos hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that i can make more such videos for you guys thank you